we're a little bit short on time, so I'm going to go through this pretty quick. One thing I do want to assure you guys of is that we have a lot of customers that are concerned about this. Um, a lot of customers that have also gone through the migration to microservices and said, oh, wow, this is a lot easier than I thought. So it's not that bad. Uh, but we are going to be coming out with a lot more material around this. And it's not like you need to worry about it right now. You've got a couple of years to do it. Uh, but it is something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, I just wanted to quickly go over the upgrade path. So if you're on Golden Gate 11, 12, or 18, you'll need to go to 19 or 21 first. It's here where you should look at converting to microservices, and then you can upgrade to Golden Gate 23i. And the way, I, and this will make more sense in a couple of slides when I get into the architecture of microservices if you're not familiar with it. Uh, but go to 19 or 21C, then switch to microservices, and then go to 23AI. Uh, as far as the support timelines, uh, because we know this is kind of stressful for people, we've gone a lot, gone around and requested and gotten approved extended support and additional premier support for Golden Gate 19 and 21C. So originally, Golden Gate 21C was set to the end of life uh, within a year. And so we've been able to extend that until April 2026. Uh, we've also waived the support fee for extended support for Oracle 19C, Golden Gate 19C. Um, and so you don't have to pay additional support. You can stay on that release until April of 2026 as well. Uh, if you're beyond, if you stay on 19C beyond April 2026, then that additional uh, extended support fee does kick in, and that'll last for a year. And then, of course, for all these versions, you'll have the regular sustaining support for unlimited amount of time. For the Golden Gate 23 AI, uh, it'll be in premier support as one of the long-term releases for five years. So it'll be there until 2029, uh, and then it'll have additional three years of extended support. So you'll be able, you know, you'll get patches for this all the way till June of 2032. Uh, which seems like an eternity from now, especially in IT sense. Um, if anything does change, just keep an eye out on our support middleware, on our lifetime support policy for Oracle. Golden Gate, even though it's associated with the database, is still covered under the middleware one. So you simply go to the resources tab uh, and then click on middleware and it'll bring it right up for you. Uh, some of the big benefits of moving to microservices, people are concerned about the extract and the replica. That's really the meat of Golden Gate. None of that has changed. So it's the same extract, the same trusted replicat that you guys know and love today. Uh, the checkpointing is all the same. The trail files are the same. Uh, the only thing that's different is how you communicate with Golden Gate. And so we've got a really easy to use web interface. Customers that don't like that can stick with the command line interface. And we've got the same scripts, everything that you use in the command line interface with GGSCI today should work just fine. Uh, and of course, there's also a REST API. One of the biggest benefits that we hear from customers is the remote administration. So in the past, you would have to log into the operating system for where GGSCI is located, go and then bring it up there and actually use it. With the admin client, which is the command line interface for the uh, microservices architecture, that's remote. And I'll get into how that works in a little bit too. There's also additional roles and users responsibilities that you can configure. Um, there's better encryption and security within the microservices architecture. It also uses certificates, which is very handy too. Uh, and then the microservices architecture can be deployed anywhere. So on premise, you can use microservices and OCI, it's already in microservices. Uh, also in third-party clouds, it's all fully supported and certified as well. So I do want to kind of spend just a couple seconds going over the architecture. So you've got a couple ways to interface with uh, microservices. You've got your admin client and web interface. That's what most people are going to be using. The first thing that you have is a service manager. You can kind of configure, uh, the service manager is kind of the, the baseline requirement that's needed for any Golden Gate microservices installation. Once you have a service manager, you then have an administration service. This is kind of your basis of what we call a deployment. So if you think about it in a multi-tenant sense, like an Oracle multi-tenant, your service manager could almost be considered your container database. And then you have an administration service, which is kind of like your pluckable database. So I can have one service manager 
and a whole bunch of Golden Gate deployments connected to that service manager. And so when I talk about, you know, the upgrading, the upgrade to microservices first, let's say that I've got a Golden Gate 19C microservices installation and a Golden Gate 23 AI microservices installation on the same server. If I want to upgrade a deployment, just like I can upgrade a pluggable database, you would unplug it from 19C and plug it into the 23, you can essentially do the same thing. So I would stop my Golden Gate 19C deployment. I would change my uh, environment variables to my new Golden Gate 23 AI home. And then I can restart the deployment. It'll be and attach it to the 23 AI service manager. Now my Golden Gate environment is upgraded. So really, really simple, very easy to do. I can move deployments between installations very smoothly, very easily. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility there. Within a deployment, I have my distribution services, my receiver services, my performance metrics, which is going to gather all the details. And then, of course, you've got that mimicked on your target system, too. Now, if I wanted to set up an environment, I can connect to my source database with my extract process. Uh, and I don't have it pictured here, uh, but this is remote connection. So I don't have to run microservices on the same server as my database. Just like today, I can run Golden Gate remotely. I can do the same thing with microservices. So I can install Golden Gate in a hub and then connect to any database as long as I can make a SQL net connection or an ODBC connection or whatever connection this Golden Gate version uses for that database. Um, but it's the same extract as always. And then it's gonna write to the trail files. Instead of having an extract pump that sends the data across a network, we have a distribution service. This distribution service then sends it across the network using HTTP or HTTPS. If you're going to from a microservices to non-microservices, this communication method would be the old Golden Gate traditional method. And so you can actually have mix and match deployments. So I can have microservices on one side and classic architecture on the other, and that's perfectly fine. And it doesn't have to be source or target. It can be either one. Uh, but in this case, we're talking about microservices. Once the data is sent over, it's received. The trail files are rebuilt on the target system, just like in a classic architecture where I have my normal replicate, and then it connects to a target database. Again, this is all done through SQLNet or whatever connection protocol that database engine uses. And so it can be done remotely too. Um, you can run everything on the same server too. So if, for example, if everything's in the same data center or using OCI Golden Gate, you can skip the distribution and receiver service entirely and just have your extract write to trail files and then a replica process, pick that data up and apply it over again. So it's very, very simple. Uh, and then of course you have a RESTful API that you can also use to access the service. Uh, a lot of people, you know, had complaints about the REST, inter or excuse me, about the microservices user interface for the first couple of releases. We've gone through and spent an um, immense amount of time optimizing these systems and talking to customers about what they wanted to see in it. So there's all sorts of additional statistics. You can get information much more readily. Uh, the screens also refresh much, much faster. We have a lot of customers that want to run dozens or even 100, 200 extracts and replicates in a single deployment, and the screens were taking a long time to come up. So we've optimized how those screens are actually built. So it's really nice. We also have customers that are kind of some of our advanced users that have gone in and said, hey, I really like the way that you've done the user interface, but I want to build my own. And I need to construct my own user interface for a specific set of users. So if you go into your web browser, turn on debugging mode, you can actually see the REST API calls we're making under the covers. And you can write your own web interface using those same APIs as an example. So there's a huge benefit here, a lot of really cool things you can do with it. But we ha do have a lot of customers that just aren't fans of a user interface. So they want to stick with the admin client, no problem. Um, I do apologize for the size of this, but the admin client is essentially a better version of GGSCI. Uh, initially, when you open up the admin client, you're not connected to any Golden Gate deployment. The first thing you'll do is you'll connect in. Um, and this, this is remote. Again, I can install the admin client locally on my laptop and connect to any Golden Gate deployment that I have the ability to ping. Uh, and I have a username and password for it too, of course. But once I've done that, then everything else is the same as GGSCI. 
In fact, the admin client isn't, even has a better parser so that you don't need to worry about things like commas. If you see in this example, my ad extract, I have a comma here, a comma here. That's not really necessary. In the register extract, I got rid of all those. It still works just fine. And then all the output, everything is exactly the same. So all of your obey scripts, all your shell scripts, all your uh, parsing files and everything that you've created for classic architecture will work just fine with it. For people that want more power, we've got, they can use something like API developer to go in and actually call the REST API to get information back and forth. This is how our web UI is built. Um, you can also integrate it in with Python. So there's a, a lot more power here than what you have. Um, I just wanted to touch on a couple of very cool uh, and different commands within the admin client that you'll be using for microservices. The first is connect and disconnect. Uh, you'll wanna make sure that as you connect it, when you launch the admin client, you connect into an environment first. And then there's also, of course, a disconnect. Um, you can also do something called a status deployment, which will give you all the information about the entire deployment, uh, which is essentially the same thing today as doing an info all in a GGSCI environment. Uh, and then of course you have information about your distribution pass, uh, being able to get and understand what's being sent across the network and how. Okay, so let's talk about some of the best practices of converting to microservices. So there is a utility available at this patch and don't worry about trying to write down this number. We're gonna send out these slides later uh, along with the recording so you'd be able to get it and all the links too. I have a couple of links at the end. Um, but anyways, download this patch. It's very simple to do. Um, and there's also a couple of videos that'll guide you through this process as well. Um, it'll convert most of your extract pumps into distribution pass. Uh, there are a couple that won't, and I'll get into which ones can't, uh, but it'll convert your checkpoint files. It'll even copy over all your credentials. Anything you've done for user ID alias, that'll all get moved over for you. It'll rebuild your extracts and replicates and without losing any of the positioning information. Um, your source and targets can also be converted independently uh, if you want. We have customers that are that have a lot of environments that are just a bunch of replicates, like they're doing unidirectional replication. Upgrade those first as a best practice. Uh, and then once you've upgraded the target, then you can go ahead and upgrade the source. Um, it's also not necessary to stop any database activity. During this process, the database can continue to run. When you shut down Golden Gate, it's done so in a graceful manner. And so all that database activity will be recorded as soon as it starts up we'll just go back to the old archive logs or old transaction logs and grab that information. As far as a step-by-step -step guide, and again, don't worry about writing this all out. There's uh, videos and things like that at the end of this that go through it, as well as white papers, uh, installation instructions. Um, so you'll install a new version or you install the Golden Gate Microservices architecture. You'll create a, an empty deployment. You don't need to worry about creating any new processes or anything. You'll go ahead and stop that deployment. Then you'll stop the, gold, the old classic architecture installation, including the manager process. Then run the migration utility, and I'll kind of get into that in a little bit as well. The migration utility only takes a couple seconds to run. Uh, it's pretty interactive. Uh, it's going to ask you things like, how do you want to run it? Um, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> and then uh, it'll ask you a couple questions, if necessary, as it goes through. And if you respond, yes, 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 uh, it really does take a couple seconds. Uh, I did talk to a customer that converted about 150 extracts and replicates um, across two different Golden Gate deployments. And it only took about 30 to 40 seconds each time. Um, I did it on a single system that had one extract, one replicate, and an extract pump. It was kind of a bi-directional replication scenario. And it came back faster than I could pay attention. So it's really smooth. Um, on your connected environments, so this if I'm upgrading my uh, source uh, first, then I would want to make sure that my target system is aware of that. If I'm upgrading the target, I want to make sure that my source system is aware of that. Obviously, as you go to stop the environment, let's say I'm stopping the target, uh, the extract pump on your source classic architecture is going to abend because you've shut down your Golden Gate environment and it can't connect. Uh, but once you've run the migration utility and you've got everything ready, if you need to alter 
uh, any pumps or distribution paths, you can do that. Otherwise, you restart the process and restart your extract pump, and it'll pick up right where it left off and continue sending data. So again, all this is uh, in the documentation and in the example too. Uh, the migration utility does not rename anything. It leaves the exact same names of your extracts and replicates. Uh, it does support numerous databases, DB2, MySQL, Postgres, uh, SQL Server, distributed applications, a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't support Postgres extracts at this time uh, because of the way that the replication uh, connection needs to be made into that database. And so there's a step-by-step -step guide for upgrading or converting your Postgres extracts for microservices. Um, the classic architecture needs to be 19C or higher with the July 14, 2020 bundle patch. Um, that included some additional information in there to make sure that it went smoothly. And I'm checking on time here. I need to get, go quick. <laughs> so um, let's see, a couple of other things. The syntax for it itself is very straightforward. It's just a command line interface. Um, there is something called a dry run option. So you can actually run this on your environment. It'll do a dry run. It'll actually look at everything, bring up all the appropriate errors, warnings, info messages, create all the logs for you to show you what will actually happen if you went to go do it. Um, this is definitely important. I would recommend always doing a dry run first. Um, if you do want to turn on debug, you'll get a whole bunch of additional information inside that log file that gives you details about what's going on and what it's actually looking at to give you some background into what's going on under the covers. Uh, but once you've done it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, syntax examples, because this is a jar file, uh, you're going to call Java. Uh, jar, you specify your home for your classic environment. This is where essentially your GGSCI is located. And then you just specify your options. In this case, I did a dry run. In this case, it'll just run for me. Um, also, the log files are all placed in the same location as the utility itself. Uh, after you've done this, there's a couple things you need to do. Make sure you actually start the new processes. While this does move everything over, uh, it doesn't restart them for you. So you will need to go into the admin client or web UI and create them. You want to delete the old processes. Your old checkpoint files are going to be renamed to prevent you from inadvertently starting it or having a startup with something like auto start. Um, if you do have any auto start, we have profiles within Golden Gate 23 AI that allows you to set up those same auto restart and auto start parameters. So that's all available too. Um, again, this is supported. So don't be afraid to ask for help if you have trouble. And then the final thing here, uh, there is a step-by-step -step guide. Alex Lima has provided that, it's pretty thorough. Uh, he also provides a really good link to a walkthrough that actually goes through step-by-step -step on how to use it. Uh, and then a lot of customers have asked, well, now that I've got a microservices architecture on my target, how do I get Golden Gate to connect to it? And so we've produced a video for that too.